What's up YouTube? So today we're going to go over one of my favorite series of channeling work, The Law of One. A lot of y'all have been asking me for a more in-depth video on YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram on this particular series of books. And I'm not going to lie, I apologize for the delay, but it was very complicated to dig into and dissect and make it into layman's term. So if you're into reincarnation and want to understand the metaphysics behind it, this is the video for you. The information in this series of books was channeled from the ancient deity Ra. Ra is described as a sixth density social memory complex that spoke through the tranced body of Carla Rukart. Don Elkins questioned the entity while Jim McCarthy wrote everything down. Ra explained how the last time its consciousness appeared was during the time of the ancient Egyptians, how they taught them how to create the pyramids as healing centers as well as the power of crystals. Ra was trying to spread the message of the Law of One, but after they stopped communicating with the ancient Egyptians, the message was lost over the years. So I posted a brief explanation video to the Law of One on TikTok, Instagram, and Facebook. One person's comment really stood out to me where she was asking why would Ra identify himself in the 80s, especially around the time when LSD and psychedelics were very popular. The part that really stood out the most to me about that particular question was the psychedelics. Psychedelics have been known to connect you to a higher form of consciousness. People experience godlike entities while doing psychedelics that contain DMT or high doses of psilocybin. And to answer this particular question, Ra felt as if Jim, Don, and Carla were the appropriate people to deliver the message without messing it up. Ra explained how there are an infinite number of universes, how within each universe is a level of consciousness. There are seven densities of consciousness that we all must reach throughout time. Density is described as an entanglement of light within a certain vibrational range. The lower the density, the slower the vibration rate. The higher the density, the faster the vibration rate and the ability to express consciousness. In order for consciousness to evolve, we must first have an organic experience. The first density is beginningness. It's represented by the root chakra. The process of evolution started when the universe was formed. It consists of all organic matter, earth, water, fire, and air. After billions of years of interaction, consciousness evolves to the second density. The second density is represented by the sacral chakra. The second density is associated with growth. All biological movement with all organic matter in autonomous movement. This includes microorganisms, animals, and plants. The second density is where consciousness learns to react to the environment. There's been studies that show that plants react to consciousness. If you just think about harming a plant, it will respond negatively. If you think positive and talk positive, the plant will respond positively with growth. This study proved that even at the lowest levels of life, there's still a profound consciousness that binds all living organisms. From the second density, we move on to the third density of self-awareness. Third density is represented by the solar plexus chakra. Humanity is currently on the third density. Ra described this as the shortest and most intense density. It is known as the veil of forgetting because this is where we forget all our previous incarnations. Our souls are only here for a 3D human experience. Your 3D form has no idea that you are on a journey. This is where we make the choice between positive and negative polarity. In order to evolve from the third density, you have to go through a psychological suffering. Suffering forces consciousness to gain freedom from the ego. Ego is the reason why we have things on the planet like murder, war. Ego is the body denying the soul, not realizing that we are only here for a temporary human experience. Once you realize this, your soul will have the choice between negative polarity and positive polarity. If you take the negative polarity route, you choose the evolutionary journey of service to self. If you take the positive polarity route, you take the evolutionary journey of service to others. After this, you move on to the fourth density. Yahshua, as well as many other ascendant masters, function from the fourth density and try to pass their teachings. The fourth density is the density of love and understanding. It is represented by the heart chakra. The life cycle of a fourth density being is 90,000 years. A full evolutionary cycle is 30 million years. As I mentioned in the video earlier, Ra is a social memory construct. This becomes formed in the fourth density. Fourth density is where individuals merge consciousness and become a larger entity. Fourth density beings are light beings. 
they vibrate at a higher frequency. This is where light bodies are formed. Your astral body is a light body. This is why people who mastered the art of astral projection can communicate with extraterrestrials. They are vibrating on the same frequency. Fourth density beings will appear godlike due to their ability to express consciousness. To our ancient ancestors who walk with these light beings, they considered these fourth density beings gods and created mythologies and religions to worship them. Fourth density beings will be able to communicate telepathically, levitate, and perform miracles such as healing. Yashua was one of those beings who took the service to others route in order to ascend to the fifth density. The fifth density is that of wisdom and light. It is represented by the throat chakra. Here is where you balance out the love and understanding from the fourth density. Many ascendant masters from the fifth density incarnate back to earth to the third density to teach their lessons learned in the fourth, as well as lift the veil. They are the guys that are helping humanity to raise its consciousness on a planetary level. Enlightened monks are believed to be these beings, considering the fact that many of them have the ability to transform into their light body. Fifth density beings can manipulate consciousness. Social memory construct is more powerful because it is on a planetary level at this point. Once the fifth density being achieves balance, it moves on to the sixth density. Sixth density represents unity and balance achieved in the fifth density. It's represented by the third eye chakra because by this time you have seen through many eyes. You have been reincarnating for over 75 million years. The soul that chooses to service the self cannot proceed past here because it realizes that evolution is impossible without love and wisdom. In order to move on to the seventh density, the sixth density being has to go back in time to guide all its previous incarnations to serve as its higher self. You are your own spiritual guide. You know that gut feeling that sways you to make decisions from time to time? That is literally your future self pushing you to become your higher self. Six dimensional beings exist outside of space and time. To get a better understanding of this, the movie Interstellar has a brilliant example of existing in a fifth dimensional time construct. In the movie Interstellar, Matthew McConaughey's character enters a black hole. This put him in a point of time where time and space were non-linear. He was able to send his past self and his daughter messages from 10 millions of light years away into the future. This period of time was known as the Tesseract. This allowed him to see the past, present, and future all at once. This concept is exactly what your sixth dimensional being is doing. It is going back in time to serve as a guide to your unevolved consciousness. Willow has a popular song called Wait a Minute. And one of the lyrics that always resonated with me was the Wait a Minute, I think I left my consciousness in the sixth dimension. Now, I don't know if this was intentional, if she or whoever wrote the song read the law of one, but they're literally describing what your sixth entity being is doing. It's leaving its consciousness in the sixth dimension, the sixth density, and bringing it to you in the third density who is here right now. And it's been doing this for over 75 million years. Once it completes this service to self, it moves on to the seventh density. The final stage in the evolutionary journey of consciousness is the seventh density. It is represented by the crown chakra. Seventh density beings serve as teachers and guides to sixth density beings. Here is where you lose all personal memory and identity as you move closer to the creator. Seventh density beings have one foot in time and one foot in eternity. Now it is noted that raw social memory construct has not progressed past the seventh density. They only know the information that was passed down from previous 7th density masters. The 8th density is where everything restarts. You move closer to the creator but take a step back at the same time. You are starting the journey all over again into a new octave slash universe. Now it is unknown to how many octaves human consciousness has been through already. We could have been on this journey millions of times already or this could be our very first octave. At the end of the day, human consciousness always finds its way back to the creator no matter the polarity. Well, I hope this video gave you all a better understanding of the evolutionary journey of human consciousness according to Ra and the Law of One. If you are interested in listening to the channel in sessions, you can visit lawofone.info. I'll be posting a link to it in the video description below. Also, be sure to like and subscribe because I'll be posting more content along the lines of this. My next video will be talking about the true purposes of pyramids and the healing powers of crystals. Until next time, people.
tap into the frequency line.